Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today we're discussing the history of the infamous village Godric's Hollow. Located in England's West Country, Godric's Hollow is a village that both muggles and wizards call home. Although the exact founding date of the village is unknown, being that it is the birthplace of Godric Gryffindor, famous for being one of the founders of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, we can assume that some version of the settlement has been around since at least the late 10th century, as Godric was born in the latter half of the 900s. The village itself has been described as rather quaint, with rows of neighboring cottages lining its narrow streets. As it stands today, Godric's Hollow also includes a church, shops, a post office, a pub, a graveyard, filled with the tombstones of many famous and legendary witches and wizards, as well as a small village square in the center of town. All of this and its charm are noted by Harry Potter the first time he sets foot in the village, alongside Hermione Granger in 1997. They were standing hand in hand in a snowy lane under a dark blue sky, in which the night's first stars were already glimmering feebly. Cottages stood on either side of the narrow road, Christmas decorations twinkling in their windows, a short way ahead of them, a glow of golden streetlights indicated the center of the village. Then the little lane along which they were walking curved to the left, and the heart of the village, a small square, was revealed to them. Strung all around with colored lights, there was what looked like a war memorial in the middle, partly obscured by a wind-blown Christmas tree. There were several shops, a post office, a pub, and a little church whose stained glass windows were glowing jewel bright across the square. Before the village became what it is today, however, it is believed that the Peveril brothers resided in Godric's Hollow sometime during the 13th century, due to the fact that all three of their tombstones can be found in the village's graveyard. This is of note as Ignotus Cadmus and Antioch Peveril are rumored to be the three brothers whom the tale of the three brothers is based on. The story is one of several included in the tales of Beadle and the Bard, a presumed work of fiction told to wizarding children in which three brothers each receive a gift from death himself. These items went on to become known throughout magical society as the fabled Deathly Hallows. While not much is known about the village during the centuries that passed between the 1200s and the 1600s, there was a mass arrival of magical folks to Godric's Hollow in the late 17th century. This is supported by the wizarding text, A History of Magic, which notes that Godric's Hollow was the primary choice of settlement for magical families after the International Statute of Secrecy went into effect in 1689. While there were likely both Muggle and magical residents prior to this time, it is widely understood that Godric's Hollow became much more populated by witches and wizards from that year onward. Magical historian and author of A History of Magic, Batilda Bagshot, also called the village of Godric's Hollow home, living there during both the 1800s and 1900s, before her inevitable murder in 1997 at the hands of Lord Voldemort. Before her death, however, presumably in the early 1890s, the Dumbledores moved into the cottage beside Batilda's, and the two families became close friends and neighbors. Sadly, the Dumbledores' move to Godric's Hollow had been prompted by a series of tragic and unfortunate events, starting with an attack on young Ariana Dumbledore by three young muggles, and ending with Albus' father, Percival, being sentenced to live out his remaining days in the wizarding prison of Azkaban. And so, it was likely around 1891 or 1892 that Albus, his mother Kendra, brother Aberforth, and sister Ariana settled into their new home in the Hollow. Their move from Mold on the Wald to Godric's Hollow is believed to have been done in an effort to protect young Ariana, who tragically became an obscurial as a result of being attacked at such a young age. Unable to control her own magic, in 1899, a then 14-year-old Ariana accidentally killed her mother in a fit. From there, Godric's Hollow saw the undoing of the Dumbledore family in the span of only one year. It was later, in 1899, that Batilda introduced Albus to her great-nephew, Gellert Grindelwald, the man destined to become one of magical society's darkest wizards of all time. The two fell in love and made great and terrible plans to take over the wizarding world and subjugate Mugglekind. The village was also the setting for Aberforth to fall in love, who also in 1899 impregnated a witch whose identity remains a mystery. 
This mystery witch then gave birth to the wizard, who would become known as Credence Barebone, another obscurial who would one day stand beside Grindelwald in his endeavors to take control of the International Confederation of Wizards. Finally, in the summer of 1899, Ariana was inadvertently killed during a frivolous duel between Albus, Aberforth, and Gellert. To this day, it's believed that the tombstones of both Kendra and Ariana Dumbledore reside in the graveyard of Godric's Hollow. Then, with little less than a century having gone by, in likely 1979 or 1980, Lily and James Potter moved to Godric's Hollow. Soon after, Lily gave birth to their first and only son, Harry, on July 31st, 1980. It was then just over one year later that tragedy struck within their Godric's Hollow home. Believing a prophecy that indicated that Harry Potter would be his ultimate downfall, Lord Voldemort set out to murder the young boy and anyone who stood in his way. Lily and James attempted to protect themselves and their son through the use of the Fidelius charm, only to be betrayed by the person they had entrusted with their secret location. With the knowledge of where their cottage stood, the Dark Lord came to Godric's Hollow and murdered both James and Lily, but was struck down by a form of ancient magic evoked by Lily's loving sacrifice to protect her child. It was here in their home in Godric's Hollow that Harry became the first ever wizard to have survived the killing curse, as described by Harry during his first visit to his childhood home in 1997. He could see it. The Fidelius charm must have died with James and Lily. The hedge had grown wild in the 16 years since Hagrid had taken Harry from the rubble that lay scattered against the waist-high grass. Most of the cottage was still standing, though entirely covered in dark ivy and snow but the right side of the top floor had been blown apart. That, Harry was sure, was where the curse had backfired. He and Hermione stood at the gate, gazing up at the wreck of what must once have been a cottage, just like those that flanked it. His touch on the gate seemed to have done it. A sign had risen out of the ground in front of them, up through the tangles of nettles and weeds, like some bizarre, fast-growing flower, and in golden letters upon the wood it said, On this spot, on the night of 31st of October 1981, Lily and James Potter lost their lives. Their son Harry remains the only wizard ever to have survived the killing curse. This house, invisible to muggles, has been left in its ruined state as a monument to the Potters, and as a reminder of the violence that tore apart their family. The village also has a statue commemorating the tragedy that befell the Potters in Godric's Hollow, similarly hidden from muggle view by magic. This is described in the following passage from Harry and Hermione's same visit in 1997. Harry, look! She was pointing at the Bourne Memorial. As they had passed it, it had transformed. Instead of an obelisk covered in names, there was a statue of three people. A man with untidy hair and glasses, a woman with long hair and a kind, pretty face, and a baby boy sitting in his mother's arms. While visiting Godric's Hollow in 1997, Harry and Hermione also discovered that Batilda Bagshot had been killed by Voldemort, her corpse inhabited by his pet snake, Nagini. Fortunately, before Voldemort arrived or Nagini could harm either one of them, they were able to escape from the village by apparating away. It's not known for certain what has taken place in Godric's Hollow since the late 1990s, magical or otherwise. And so with that, we've come to the end of today's video. What did you think? Did I miss anything? Please share your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.